All right, welcome back. So in this video, I am introducing how we talk about three-dimensional space in math. So I'm just gonna go through some of our conventions that we use so that you know what to expect and how most people are communicating in three dimensions when they're doing it through math. So at this point, we're probably used to seeing an XY plane. So the X is on the horizontal and the Y is on the vertical. This is a two-dimensional space. We have X and then we have Y. I see this as having two axes. But what we can do is set this down flat on a surface and think about three dimensions where we now are looking at a vertical axis. So now we have a Z axis pointing straight up. So this is now three dimensions. We don't just have X and Y, we also have Z. So I like to think of the X, Y axes as being sort of the floor and the Z as representing the height. This specific way that you are seeing here of laying it out with the X axis sort of pointing forward on the left and the Y axis coming out to the side on the right, this is our standard way of setting up the axes. So with this way of orienting things, we have our three dimensions, X, Y, and Z. And so points on these axes are going to have the form X, comma, Y, comma, Z. So this looks very similar to the two-dimensional situations we're used to with X and Y, but this time we just add in the Z coordinate for that third position. So to help us get oriented with how these three dimensions look and the sort of the ways we can focus on different parts of it, I just want to go through some different planes that we have that are made up by these axes. So if we first look at the X, Y plane, this is made of the X axis and the Y axis. And if we were to consider a point on this plane, it would have the form X, Y, zero. So every point on the X, Y plane has a Z value of zero. It has no height, so it's just flat on that plane. I like to think of the X, Y plane as sort of the floor of our space. Next, we can look at the Y, Z plane. So in this plane, the X values are all zero. So all of the points would have some Y value and some Z value, but they have no X value. So points would have the form zero, Y, Z. Then lastly, we could look at just the X, Z plane. So for this plane, all of the Y values are zero. So points will have the form X, zero, Z. So understanding these planes will come in handy later as we do some more problems. And I think it's just nice to help us understand how this space works a little bit. All right, so next with these axes, we want to define where the positive and negative values go for each the X, Y, and Z. So we use the positive X direction as the direction that comes out toward us on the graph. So these are the positive X values. And then the Y values are positive also as they come sort of forward out on the graph, just with the way we're looking at it here. Then the vertical Z values that go up are the positive ones, and the ones sort of below this X, Y plane would be the negative ones. So along with having the, where the positive X, Y, and Z values are, we like to have a way to discuss this sort of first area where all of them are positive, and we do this by breaking the graph up into octants. So rather than having quadrants like we do in two dimensions, we have octants here in three dimensions. So that means there are eight of them and the numbering of all of them isn't really too important. It's just most important that you understand that this is the first octant that we're looking at here. It's where the X, Y, and Z values are all positive. So this corresponds to the first quadrant in two dimensions where the X and Y values would be positive. And as a note, we have an origin here, just like we do in two dimensions. It's at zero, zero, zero. Okay, so just to wrap up, I wanna go through one more notation thing. So you're probably used to seeing the real numbers. These are displayed in one dimension, so maybe like an X axis. And we have a way of writing this mathematically, and it's this R with the bar. This is like a double R notation. I like to think of it as sort of like an outlined R. It's just a math symbol we often see, and it represents the real numbers in one dimension. 
So then we can take this and look at a two-dimensional space. So we have the real numbers on the x-axis and the real numbers on the y-axis. And we call this r2. So we use that same r symbol and it looks like it's r squared, but I think of it as r2. This is to represent our two dimensions of real numbers. Then lastly, with what we're learning today, we can do three dimensions. So we lay those x, y axes sort of flat in the space and the z axis now comes up. And in this, we have three dimensions and we call this R3. So I just wanna comment on that here so that if you see something with the R symbol in the future, you know what it means and you know that that superscript refers to the number of dimensions. So R2 is two dimensions, R3 is three dimensions. And if you saw Rn, that would be an n-dimensional space. Okay, that's just our little introduction into three-dimensional space and how we look at it. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.